Well, today I'd like to talk about growing trees from seed. So growing trees from seed is a little growing, a little different than growing vegetables from seed. So let's take uh, corn and, and peas and beans, for example. You can just sprout them uh, right out of the seed packet at any time of the year. Of course, if you sprout them in the fall, you're not going to go anywhere unless you live uh, um, in a very warm climate. Uh, Corn and, and beans actually take a high temperature, uh, require a high temperature before they'll sprout, whereas peas sprout at a lower temperature, but all they really need is moisture uh, to start sprouting. Uh, with, uh, with trees, it's different, especially nut trees native to the northern hemisphere or northern regions of the world. Um, uh, they need to have a, a stratification period. So stratification is essentially going through a cold period before they'll sprout. That way they don't start sprouting in the fall as soon as they fall to the ground from the trees. If they did, of course, the, the, the first freezing weather would wipe them out. Uh, and so, um, so they naturally have to go through this cold period uh, called stratification before they will sprout. Um, and uh, and uh, some, some other uh, sorts of plants also require scarification. Scarification is a way of, of, of breaking the, the natural dormancy. In the case of the more common tree seeds, it's just uh, the cold period that's necessary. But in the case of many fruit-bearing plants, for example, um, uh, that, that can be grown from seed, they, they normally might go through the stomach of a bird, to give an example, uh, for many fruits. And so there, they're exposed to acids that uh, break down the seed coat and break down the dormancy. Um, and that can be induced either by soaking seeds in acid or by uh, hydrochloric acid or something like that, or, or by um, sometimes exposing a seed to hot water that can break internal dormancy. Or also, um, uh, in some cases, you can actually take the, the seed and scrape it against something like sandpaper to break the the, the, the dormancy of the seed coat that would otherwise be impermeable to, to water. Um, but uh, if you want to find out more information about certain types of hard to sprout seeds, here are some good books that you can refer to. This book uh, was published by the USDA, Seeds of Woody Plants in the United States. Uh, this is an older textbook. Uh, this will tell you about any woody plant, how to grow it from seed. Uh, and it tells you what the scarification and stratification requirements are. And uh, it's very thorough. And, um, and a more up-to-date book is that we have sold in the past. I'm not sure if it's still in stock or not. The Reference Manual of Woody Seed or Woody Plant Propagation um, is another good reference along those same lines. But today we're going to mostly be talking about nut trees um, and most nut seeds um, are not quite so tricky as some of the fruit-bearing seeds. In other words, they don't need the scarification, they just need the stratification, the cold period. And, and this book, uh, How to Grow Your Own Nuts, by Martin Crawford, does talk about that sort of thing, uh, about sprouting. But I'm gonna, what I'm going to talk about today is how you can do it without referring to uh, books and such. Just, just the real basics that you need to know about sprouting seeds is, um, is uh, we, we sell uh, trees of various um, seeds of various nut trees, and uh, for example, we have walnut and butternut here, and, and chestnut, and uh, and and all of these um, seeds will will readily sprout after. Uh, after they've completed their, their necessary cold period. So you can do that just in the refrigerator. Um, but, um, um, or you can plant them in the fall. Um, and, and the way that these will sprout is the, the new sprout will emerge from the pointy tip of the nut and it will go down. In the case of the chestnut, it will go emerge like this and it will go down. And that will happen usually in the late winter, early spring. And then uh, the after it's gone down, the new shoot will come up this way to break the surface of the earth, and the butternut would do the same thing, as would the walnut, or um, an acorn, 
sprouting from the pointy end, or, or a hazelnut, or a shagbark hickory, they all sprout from the pointy end, or a black walnut, putting the sprout down first, developing the root system, or the monkey puzzle nut, they all develop a root system first, uh, heart nut, same deal, all of these. So, um, and then only later will the, will the top uh, break the surface of the earth, usually after uh, a certain period of warmth. Uh, so they're not going to be endangered by a late frost. Now, um, uh, the, um, in the case of chestnuts and acorns, they can, the seeds cannot be allowed to dry out. If the seeds have, have dried out to the point where there's any give to the shell when you squeeze them, then they will have lost their viability. They'll be fine for eating, but not for sprouting. Once they've dried out, they have lost viability. Whereas with walnuts, for example, butternuts uh, and such, um, they can get somewhat dry and still be viable. And uh, so it's just a matter of, um, of keeping them from drying out. So since we don't want chestnuts and acorns to dry out, how are we going to keep them from drying out in a modern refrigerator? You can't unless they're sealed in a plastic bag, uh, well sealed in a plastic bag because modern refrigerators have a frost-free element that tends to dry things up. And, uh, uh, and so that will, that will ruin the viability of seeds quickly if they're allowed to dry out. So, but having them in a sealed plastic bag uh, will ensure that they maintain their humidity as long as they're viable when they're put into the bag. Uh, you can even enclose uh, some damp peat moss or some a damp paper towel or something of that nature to ensure that the humidity is maintained. So, so here we're in a walk-in cooler. This is a fairly humid walk-in cooler. You can see that we've got some of our seeds stashed here in the Ziploc bags with the, with the name of each variety on them for planting out later this, uh, this winter in the greenhouses. And, uh, they can be loose like this for a short period of time, but these coolers will eventually dry them out too much. That's why they're sealed. So this, this cooler is kept pretty humid, so we can actually store seeds such as these uh, shellbark hickories and butternuts loose in here for several months because the humidity level is quite high in these coolers. But, uh, and these are all different seed nuts that we reserved for planting. There's some heart nuts. Another uh, alternative approach to storing seeds, especially if you have a lot too much to, uh, for um, the capacity of a refrigerator, um, would be to store them outdoors. Now, the best way to do that would be to have uh, a bucket that, if you have a lot of seeds, you could have a bucket with small holes drilled in the bottom. Um, holes that are small enough that a mouse can't get through the bottom drainage holes into the seed stash inside the bucket. Then um, you could layer in the bottom of the bucket uh, a layer of sand, maybe two inches of sand or fresh sawdust even, and then a layer of nuts, a whole layer of nuts, then another layer of sand, then a whole other layer of nuts. You can just fill up the bucket with seeds that are being stratified outdoors and then at the very top of your bucket then you'd put some kind of screening that would prevent rodents and squirrels from getting in to the seed stash and then that bucket in a temperate climate such as here in western Washington it doesn't usually get cold enough to to uh, to damage the seeds over winter if you live in a really cold area then you'd want to bury the bucket in the earth so that the insulation of the earth would provide a protection for the seed. The seed could be exposed to freezing weather, but not, not freezing weather to the point where it would get down into the single digits or low teens. That could destroy the seed viability. So, okay. so in planting, uh, the depth of planting is uh, not usually terribly critical. Uh, the most important thing is that the is that the seed be planted uh, so that the seed is completely covered so that it's less likely to dry out. So it can be, uh, you know, a thumb's thickness, for example, uh, below the soil line, 
is, is generally quite adequate. Um, one possible exception would be monkey puzzles, which are a little more sensitive to uh, excessive moisture. So we just barely cover the top of the seed and I plant them at a slight angle. And the sprout emerges down and this is just barely covered in soil. Um, this is a bed of hazelnut seedlings. It's now November, mid-November, uh, in, a, in a greenhouse, an unheated greenhouse. Um, and these were planted last, uh, last winter or spring. Uh, and um, so these are one-year-old seedlings. And let's see if we can pull one out here without too much trouble. And get the decent so They put on a lot of growth in, in one summer uh, in the greenhouse. Whereas uh, here we have chestnuts, one-year-old seedlings, and uh, that were planted probably last February. We we took these uh, these beds, which are uh, about a foot tall, and screened them with fine uh, metal screening uh, across the top of the bed after we planted the seed, so that. Uh, Mice couldn't get in here and pull the seeds out, or squirrels couldn't get in here and pull the seeds out. So we waited until the seeds sprouted a bit, um, but before they started developing leaves, uh, before we took off the screening, so that they were protected right up until the last minute. And uh, whereas uh, these uh, one-year seedlings were left uh, to be grafted, and so uh, we took uh, what were one-year seedlings and grafted them uh, last April. You can see here's the graft on this one, here's the graft on this one, here's the graft on this one. So some of them, this one grew uh, 18 inches, this one grew, uh, let's see, uh, well about 8 feet uh, in one summer. So um, thanks to the fact that the root system wasn't disturbed or anything, they put on a lot of growth. Chestnuts can be very fast growing hardwoods under the right conditions, especially before they start producing heavy crops of nuts. They're, they can be one of the most vigorous of all hardwood trees. So I, I did want to point out also the advantages and disadvantages of growing nut trees from seed. The, the advantage, of course, is that the price is much more reasonable uh, if you're just growing them from seed as opposed to buying finished trees uh, of a named variety. Um, so, and also, if you're going to be grafting trees, then uh, it's, uh, you need a rootstock. So that's another reason to grow them from seed. The disadvantage of growing nut trees from seed is that they're going to be somewhat more variable than, uh, than, than a grafted tree would be, or, a, or in the case of hazelnuts, a layered tree. Uh, uh, hazelnuts are clonally propagated uh, on their own roots, so the name varieties of hazelnuts will often start producing nuts in, in two or three years. Uh, whereas a seedling, uh, one just grown from the nut, uh, is going to take uh, twice as long to start uh, producing. And then uh, uh, the quality of the nut being produced from any seedling is going to be variable because uh, a seedling, a, a, a nut tree grown from seed, is going to have the genetics of the, the female uh, tree that produced the nut as well as whatever variety pollinated it. So each seedling is going to be a little different from each other one. Um, and they're, they're, each one is going to be distinctly different. And, uh, and they don't usually grow true from seed. So with the name varieties of walnuts and, and chestnuts and, and hazelnuts, you're usually going to get a better product from, uh, from a, a grafted tree or in the case of hazelnuts. So, a name variety that's propagated on its own roots than you will from seed. So just so you understand that, that's uh, an important consideration. Um, another thing that um, I wanted to mention as I was talking earlier about not letting seeds dry out, I also uh, found it helpful when we are planting our seeds out in our seed beds. Um, I usually soak the nuts uh, 24 hours prior to planting to make sure that they're fully rehydrated and, uh, and uh, so they can soak uh, 
just in water. Uh, we use uh, um, uh, a, uh, a solution that has trace elements in it as well. But you can just soak them in water, and uh, and that way they're fully hydrated and they're likely to sprout better, um, more uniformly and quicker. Uh, and uh, and um, and some seeds can actually be very slow to to take up water again, uh, especially the real thick shelled nuts like uh, black walnut and butternut. And so soaking can be very helpful in that regard. Incidentally, soaking can also be a way of controlling mold issues. For example, I know in Italy it's traditional to soak chestnuts for several days in water um, just to uh, kill surface molds, and, uh, and, uh, and that can be used for, for nuts that are going to be eaten as well as... Uh